What is going on guys? Jack here and welcome back to another episode of The Charge to the Top. We are here with Hereford FC. We're in the Skybet League 2. Today we are going to be taking on Oldham in what is a massive game that really is going to determine, I think, where our ambitions lie this season. And uh, yeah, let's get into it, I guess. Since the last episode, which of course was against Portsmouth, um, it's been an okay run of form really. We've lost just one game, unfortunately for us. We've been slipping up elsewhere. Of course, that one defeat I'm referring to in the league, the Checker A Trophy, also known as the trophy, which I, I don't really care about and is a bit of a joke in English football at the moment. That was the first game that we actually played following the Peterborough draw last time out. And it finished 4-2. Not the greatest result for us, obviously, the 4-2 defeat. Madison and Holmes getting the goals was against Man City's under-23s, but at the same time, would have been nice to be a little bit competitive. As you can see, since then, we've actually played five games in the league, and whilst our form of late has been slightly better, just two wins in our last five, a little bit subpar. However, when you kind of look at the games that we've played and the teams we've played against, perhaps it becomes slightly more excusable. Anyway, the first of these games came against Chesterfield, a team who I believe are still currently unbeaten in the league. A very, very good side. As you can see, James Madison scored within the first minute for us, and it took a late equaliser for them uh, to secure just the one point going their way, and... It was a little bit unfortunate, this game. Um, we didn't use any subs. I was quite happy with how the game was going. And it's just unfortunate, I guess, that with five minutes left of the game, we couldn't hold out. Chesterfield, they're a good team in this division. They are tipped to, to get promoted. They are right up there in the table, as I said, unbeaten. So perhaps a draw against them, not the worst of results. What certainly was a bad result, however, was a 3-1 defeat away from home against Dulwich Hamlet. Of course, a team who were promoted with us last year, they currently languish towards the bottom of the league. I think they're one place outside of the relegation zone. So you'd expect us to do better than we did here. We were actually in the lead very early on. Unfortunately for us, we found ourselves 2-1 down just before half time. I made a few changes. Wes Harding got another for them. And in truth, they were the better side at home. And we just never really got going in that game. So a 3-1 defeat. The only defeat we've had so far this season. But coming against a team really struggling in the league. Definitely, you know, less than, uh, I guess, sat satisfactory in terms of our performance there. In the next game, we played Blackpool, who are a team right up there at the table. And we demolished them. 3-0 it finished. They are a team not far behind us. I believe they're still really challenging for the playoffs this year. They were tipped to do very, very well in the league. And, uh, yeah, they had just the one shot on target against us. We won 3-0. It could have been significantly more. But regardless, just important to chalk up the three points after four games without a win. The next game against Crawley was a 0-0 defeat. Um, I probably would have taken this result in truth, you know, if you told me at the start of the game away from home. And, uh, well, following on from their red card with 20 minutes left, I was really hoping we could kick on and make something happen. Unfortunately, that wasn't the case. As you can see, that red card came after Crawley had made all of their subs. So they were kind of limited, I guess, in terms of how could they how they could adapt and we simply put didn't really capitalize on that nil nil though an okay result i guess the next game we had against carlisle 3-1 win good result good of course to score three goals it's a shame that we lost out on the clean sheet josh walker with a 91st minute goal but regardless it wasn't a bad little performance and well as you can see looking at the league table we currently sit in fourth and as i mentioned today we are going to be taking on oldham who currently sit uh, one place above us but four points ahead and really this is a big game for us it's our 11th game of the season a defeat here would see us slip seven points behind them and in truth you'd feel like with seven points uh, kind of off the automatic promotion spots maybe our eyes get casted more towards the playoffs as being a realistic goal this season. A win against Oldham, of course, wouldn't see us leapfrog them, but it would see us really close that gap well. And a defeat here, it, it would be quite hurting, I guess, to our kind of, I guess, performances. It's worth noting, actually, that our games this year, we've actually played a lot of the big teams around us. Following on from this Oldham game, in our first 11 games of the season, uh, we will have already played a lot of the teams up and around us. We will have played Chesterfield, Peterborough, Oldham, uh, Blackpool we've played. And so really, looking at it, we will have played four of the toughest games in the season. So, uh, I, I don't know, we have an easier run in, I guess, towards the end of the season and towards Christmas as well. But at the same time, it's of course worth noting that the one defeat we've had so far this season did come against Dulwich Hamlet. It's really been a shame, really, that just the quantity of draws we've had has really held us back. You know, if a few of these draws were wins, suddenly where we lie in the table is very, very different. And, well, you can see here, ourselves, Oldham, Peterborough and Chesterfield, only two defeats between our four sides after ten games each. I mean, that's not too bad, but perhaps it gives you an idea of just how good um, this league is as an overall quality. Of course, since the last episode, it has been a little over a month. I have made a few sub, uh, not sub signings, and uh, two centre mids actually. Of course, Musi now out with a long-term injury. 
looking to really remedy the centre midfield area, which was already a weaker area of the pitch. The first of the signings we brought in, Joe Edwards here, a player released by Walsall, made 110 appearances for them prior to that play for Ch uh, Colchester and Yeovil. He's a good little player. He had an okay debut, perhaps nothing to write home about too much, but at 29 years old, just good to get a little bit more experience in the side. Got some fairly solid mentals and good natural fitness as well. And the last player we brought in, a familiar face, I imagine, for a lot of you long-term work the space for years. It's Jake Hesker, a player who we had during our Lewis FC save two years ago. He came in back when we were in the Vanarama National two years ago. He joined us here in League 2, a league I know he can do some work in. He's a very good player. As soon as we've signed him, you can see his values are valued at half a million pounds, so a good little player to acquire in terms of maybe we can sell him on for some money if we have to. But at 24 years old, he looks like a very, very good playmaker. One thing that's, of course, worth noting is that I mentioned, I think, a few episodes ago I was looking at Hesketh, and I'm still looking at ways we can improve the side in terms of players whose contracts are expired. Whilst the kind of unrealistic transfers here listed are very good players, we can't quite approach them now. But the same was said about Heske for a little while ago, you know. I wasn't able to approach to sign him. And, well, in signing him, signing a few other players, our club reputation's rising. We are becoming more attracted to other teams. And we have got a few players who are also potentially going to be coming in in the not-too-distant future. The first player here, Antonio Romano, Italian, released by Rotherham after four years at the club. Looks like a very, very good player. 15 passing, 12 vision, great teamwork, good determination as well. Very, very exciting player. I'm hoping we can get him in. There's also here Basala Sambu. He's a uh, German man you can see here, formerly played at the likes of Coventry, Newport County, and more recently Everton. Looks like he could be a good little striker in terms of adding a little bit of strength in depth, and he's only 22 as well. A few deals that have been confirmed here. Liam Fox is going to be joining us from Livingston. Unfortunately, not joining us for a while yet, but this guy we sign, and I'm very excited about his signing. He's coming in for a measly fee of £6,500. Um, I've signed him from the kind of third tier Scottish side. I believe Livingston uh, were relegated to that third tier. Yeah, you can see here they were. They finished ninth in the championship. But he looks like a very, very good player. 16 years old, exceptional goalkeeper. Livingston going through some financial troubles at the moment, which is one of the reasons we were able to get him so cheap. There is a minimum release clause in his contract, unfortunately. But as you can see here, he's not going to be joining us for about 15 months. So plenty of time for him to develop. The only other player that we have got confirmed coming in is this guy, Kieran Mayer Waters. He joins us from Cork City in the Irish League. A very, very good winger, an exceptional player at this level. Lots of potential to improve he joined us on the free transfer at the end of his contract you can see here very well suited to league two football potential to be a sky bet league one winger in the future and i rate this guy he's 20 years old he's playing for the under 20s uh, kind of island squad if we just quickly compare him to harry anderson here who is our current right midfielder you can really see the difference in these players whilst harry anderson perhaps has better rounded technicals if we just look at this player as a winger, you can really see that um, Mayer Waters just shines everywhere. His physicals are very, very good. Good work rate as well. And I'm very, very excited to get this guy in the club. And at 20 years old, loads of time for him to improve as well. So definitely one to watch for the future. So yeah, we've had a few transfer dealings going on. Obviously, still a little bit of money to work with, really. And I'm going to continue to look at you know players whose contracts are expired and we might be able to get in in the not-so-distant future. Definitely a few players emerging here who I wouldn't mind signing. A few players who previously I couldn't sign, who weren't interested. They're now becoming interested because of kind of the overall quality of players that we're adding. And there's some very good players here who I'd like to get my hands on if possible. Rob Hall really stands out to me. This 26-year-old has been a player I'd love to bring in. Currently thinks we lack the financial resources. Obviously, hopefully his demand's lower. If we can add in a few more players, improve the overall quality of the side, maybe... Um, you know, teams will be more inclined, I guess, to, or players will be more inclined to want to join us. Anyway, you can see looking at the season preview here, we have climbed up to 16th in the title odds, 90 to 1 now. I believe at earlier on we were in 19th. So we are climbing. Obviously, it's still seen as a little bit of a flash in the pan at the moment, our form after 10 games. Worth noting that James Madison is in the best 11 for the league, which is a very, very good little achievement for him. But you can see this is a league that is largely dominated by Portsmouth players, uh, as well as a few players. I don't know who Mulhelm plays for. He plays for Tranmere, um, but there's players like him, and then you've got the likes of, um, mostly, to be honest, Scunthorpe and Pompey players in here. But Madison, he's making a bit of a splash in the league. And while speaking of our team as a whole, it's been a good little start to the season. You can see here, Shimanga and James Madison really being the two driving forces behind our team. Nine goals for Shimanga, six for Madison. And uh, overall, so far, so f very, very good. Unfortunately for us, Ricky Holmes, who currently has five assists and is leading the way in that statistic, out injured with a gashed head, not going to be available for today's game.
So anyway, let's get into this match against Oldham. It's a big game for us. It's also going to be a big game for a few players making their debuts, one of which is a, obviously a debut altogether in Jake Hesketh, but also Edwards making his kind of, uh, I guess, live commentary debut. So anyway, looking at our team here, you can see we've got Griffiths in goal. At left back, we, of course, go with Chris Owens. At right back, we go with Scott Wiseman. His physicals are continuing to deteriorate. It's a position I do need to improve the right back position. At centre back, we go with Mizage, and alongside him, we go with Harry Lennon. Of course, Harry Lennon out for a longish period with injuries. Kind of bounced back well. You can see a 7.28 average rating for him so far this year. Jake Heskiff makes his debut today. He is going to be playing the deep lying playmaker role for us. It's a role he's very well suited to playing. Really like this guy. An exceptional talent. Only 24 years old. Still a little bit of room to improve. Alongside him, we of course go with Joe Edwards, a very, very capable centre midfielder. On that support duty, you can see he's well suited to this role. He's got fairly decent physicals as well, decent natural fitness. He's a good, intelligent little footballer. Not perhaps the most technically gifted, but he's going to do a job for us, I think, as that midfielder on support. Anyway, well, Ricky Holmes out injured at left midfielder. We go with Danny Smith, the 20-year-old, still continuing to develop. Still a very, very exciting player, and one I would love to see continue to develop at the club. Um, perhaps not quite as good as Ricky Holmes in kind of the left midfielder position, but of course a consistent performer, a player very good at playing on this left-hand side, and it's a job he can certainly do for us. On the right-hand side, we go with Harry Anderson, as I've kind of already alluded to with our new signings. This is a guy whose position might be a little bit of a threat come January, so he's got a chance to prove himself for us here. Hopefully he can have a good little performance for us out on the right-hand side, the former Lincoln City man. And then we go to our two leading performers so far this year, James Madison, an exceptional talent. He's been scoring a fair few free kicks for us. He's played 10 games so far in the league, a 7.5 average rating. And then ahead of him, we of course go with Shimango, who a player, to be honest, who I had questions over whether or not he could step up at this level. He certainly has. Um, I am, of course, looking to continue to strengthen the side. I'd love to get him maybe one more striker, and we've kind of maybe got that coming in in the form of Sambu. I really feel like these two players could really interchange quite nicely with each other. They're fairly different players. Sambu a little bit more uh, kind of speedy, a little bit better when it comes to his physicals as a whole. But Shimanga, a very intelligent player. And a player, of course, with a proven track record for scoring goals for us. So anyway, let's submit this team for today's game. Worth knowing that Heskiff, Edwards and Danny Smith all lack in a little bit of match fitness. Of course, a nice little bonus this year has been the fact that our reserve team are playing regular uh, kind of football in a reserves league. And as a result, I'm able to put the players who are in our first team who aren't playing that much into the reserve matches just to maintain their match fitness. That's something that we have struggled with kind of over the course of, uh, you know, the last season or so. Anyway, you can see here, looking at the condition, it's not perfect by any means, but all the players with above 90 condition, massive game for us here against Oldham. You know, if we lose this game, it's going to leave us in a very awkward situation when it comes to our kind of prospects at trying to get an automatic promotion spot. You know, to go seven points behind, albeit with, you know, still 35 games of the season remaining after this match, it would be a challenge and we'd have to have a very, very good second half of the season. Of course, our fixtures have been tough to us to start the season, so you'd hope that maybe we could capitalise on that. But at the same time, maintaining this gap and maybe even trying to close it further, you know, if we could get one point behind them, that, that would put us in a great little position to really mount a charge. It's going to be difficult though. Oldham, a team perhaps more associated with League One than League Two. They've got some good players. They're performing well. They're a big favourite in the league. Let's see what we can do. Harry Anderson, he's got to fight for his position, as already mentioned, and well, that is a fantastic little pull back by him. Kabongo Shimanga is there. It's his 10th goal of the season. And Harry Anderson, some fantastic vision there. Only the one man in the centre to pick out. And he just pulled the back, ball back really, really intelligently there. You know, back towards the penalty spot. Shimanga held his run well. Defenders kind of desperately trying to get back and get between Shimanga and the goal. And while the ball ultimately diverted very, very nicely and with some decent accuracy by Shimanga into that kind of far post and well, 1-0 up after one minute. It's the dream start, isn't it? It's the start that you hope for, um, I guess, when you when you go into a match like this. And, well, hopefully we can build off this now. Harry Anderson does well to keep it in, pulls it back. Shimanga leaps like a gazelle, nods it into that bottom corner. It's a lovely little goal for him. And hopefully that's going to settle the nerves, of course, away from home here. Our away form... It's been a little bit dubious over the last year or so, you know. At home, it's always been a bit of a fortress, Edgar Street. And, uh, well, in truth, we've struggled this year and, you know, in the previous years to really have a superb away record to match our home record. But 
It's a good start here, although, as you saw there, Oldham hitting the post, perhaps a warning shot. Worth noting, I didn't talk about this, it's just popped into my head, uh, Edgar Street did get expanded over the summer, only by a few hundred seats, that was to do with the fact that you have to have all seating in League 2, in the English Football League, and uh, as a result of that, obviously, bigger attendances, more capacity, only, albeit only just, and uh, we did break our record attendance by having 5,400 fans turn up to one of our games earlier on this season which of course is fantastic to see us kind of completely maxed out our stand capacity. Anyway, we did have a good chance there whilst I was rambling, which we've squandered, and now it's actually going to be Oldham on the attack again, although Scott Wiseman wins the ball. Shumanga, got to hold up the ball well here. Doesn't, unfortunately. Gets dispossessed, but, well, we win the ball back again, but, um, well... It's it's a case of both teams struggling to string a few passes together here as well. We win the ball back once more. Can we make something happen this time? It's a big direct ball up. Shimanga not able to get there. Mizag, not the greatest touch by him. Owens, nice little interception, but only as far as Claxton. Ball into the middle. Mizag goes to the big ball over the top. Shimanga could be through here. Can he show composure? He can't. It's a fantastic save by Kula. Very powerful shot. Parried out for a throw in in the end. And well, unfortunately for us... What was a fantastic opportunity in our second clear chance of the game not resulting in a goal there. We've had a few opportunities in this match, as have Oldham. And, uh, well, you'd have to say, despite our kind of even possession, we've created the better opportunities, but we've not taken them. And Oldham, they look to be settling into this game. They are yet to hit the target after six shots, however. But you'd have to feel like in the second half, should it remain 1-0 here, we're going to have a bigger challenge in the second half when it comes to what to expect from Oldham. It is 1-0 at the break. I'm actually going to tell the players I'm very happy with that performance so far. You know, this is a must-win game for us. I want to settle the players. I don't want to, you know, make the task at hand feel too much bigger than it needs to. We don't want to apply too much extra pressure. And, uh, well, let's see what we can do here. It's going to be a, a tricky game, I imagine. You know, Oldham, they're going to be looking in the second half to use that home advantage to seize some of those opportunities they failed to hit the target with in that first half and create better ones in the second half. In terms of our team performances, James Madison actually having a very uncharacteristically poor game. That said, we are the team on the attack here. Danny Smith pulls it back. Edwards, it's a deflected shot for him, but he's going to take it. It's a goal on his debut in a live commentary. Joe Edwards, it's not a classic. Danny Smith, with the little pullback, of course, a player who's not featured too highly in the first team, the youngster. It's actually a deflected ball in. Edwards hits it. It gets deflected. It finds its way into the back of the net. It's a bit of a fluke shot. The keeper can't really um, do a lot about it. But we find ourselves two goals to the good here. And, well, when fortune favours you, you don't complain to you. And we might have another chance here. Harry Anderson, it's another deflected cross by Danny Smith that finds its way to one of our players and finds its way into the back of the net. It's a quick kind of double header here. We go 3-0 up in this game. Joe Edwards and this goal coming just over two minutes apart. It's a deflected cross in. It finds its way to Harry Anderson. He got an assist in the first half. He has a goal to add to his collection now. And Oldham, well, they would have gone into this game with high hopes of getting a good result here, of course. Uh, we're still going to be behind them in the league, but just impacting their goal difference as we are at the moment could prove very, very big in the context of our season. I'm going to make a change. Madison not having the greatest of games. I'm actually going to move Jake Heskiff to play uh, as the centre attack in mid for us. See what he can do there. And then I'm going to take off James Madison. I'm actually going to bring on Isaac Christie Davis. Of course, a player who, with the new additions in the centre midfield area, has lost his spot in the side, but still a very capable player of coming on in this kind of game and I think adding some composure. Jake Hesketh, he's not had the greatest debut, but maybe he can shine a little bit more in his more natural centre attack in mid position. Uh, but really, I feel like it's difficult to critique a player and say they've not contributed enough when your team as a whole play as well as we have here. We've not created... Um, a whole host of chances, really. You know, the clear-cut chances and half chances have been good. We've not had a load of shots. Oldham, however, very much been limited. They've yet to hit the target in this game. They've never looked like scoring. And with 40 seconds left of this game, it's going to be a case of can, can we score one more? Can we keep a clean sheet? Um, rather than are we going to win this or aren't we? Because the three points, they are in the bag now. Oldham, they have been shown up big time here. And one of the big teams in this division... We have done one over on here. I was a little bit concerned going into this game. You know, they're a very good side. Oldham, they're right up there in the table. A defeat here could have put us way outside of the kind of aspirations of an automatic promotion spot. But as things stand, we've been superb. And while we might have one last chance here, unfortunately not. Boundary Park sees the end of the game there. It finishes 3-0. Danny Smith, man of the match performance for the 20-year-old. A fantastic player. And, uh, well, a player who's really shown his worth to the team there. What a performance that was by him. 
considered the underdogs, nobody giving us a chance. But we run out 3-0 victors. We close the gap, as you can see, on Oldham. You can see Doncaster keep the gap up on us. Worth noticing that, of course, 4th to 7th get the playoff spot. So right now we sit quite comfortably in the playoffs. And uh, really now it's going to be a case of can we march on and, uh, you know, grind out a few more results that would see us maybe climb into the promotion spots. Worth noting, Oldham have scored the most goals in the league this year. So to keep a clean sheet against them, very, very impressive indeed. You know, defensively, we've been a bit lacklustre, I think it would be fair to say, uh, during the earlier stages of, of this season. We've only conceded 11 goals in 11 games now, which obviously not a flawless record by any means, but it's not a terrible record and it is one of the better ones in the division and uh, Heskiff making his debut. Good little debut for him. Smith with a fantastic performance there. His pass is completed actually really, really poor. 52%. We're going to have to look into that because that's not ideal. Um, we, our overall pass completion wasn't that bad at all, but clearly out on the left-hand side, he was just struggling a little bit when it came to his passes. Um, but no, I'm going to analyse this all in my own time. It's, it's not ideal, is it, by him, though, to just struggle as much as he did there. But he did get man of the match. He he did okay. You can see a lot of his passes that were intercepted were kind of ambitious balls forward going inside. Going down the line, it wasn't so bad. It was just these balls that he's trying to get up to the forward, perhaps a sign that he's just getting a little bit, um, what would you call it, a little bit isolated. You can see here it's this same ball where he's trying to pass it inside to the channel. Um, it'd be interesting to see, you know, obviously who he was trying to pass it to there to get a bigger picture of how things were going. But... He gave away possession 25 times, which is a little bit concerning, but we, we, can, we can learn to work off that. You can see he was giving it away in a few deeper areas as well, which is perhaps a little bit of a cause for concern. But anyway, guys, that is going to wrap up this episode for me. Hopefully you enjoyed. Good little performance there. We actually take on Accrington in our next game in the Checker Aid Trophy. Not a particularly exciting fixture. In terms of when we'll be back, we've got a whole host of games. Forest Green is on the 28th of November. That's quite a long way away, but that may well be the next time that we're back as we have got a few fairly, I don't want to say easier games, but what should be more uh, formal games, you know, games that we really should be winning. You can see we've got Gillingham in 18th, Accrington in 13th, Eastleigh, who are bottom, Yeovil in 15th, Tranmer in 10th, Bury in the Checker Aid Trophy, and then it's a few more easy games. This is a nice run for hopefully us now to kick on and get some good results. For three clean sheets in our last four games is, of course, fantastic. Hopefully, we can build off that. Anyway, that's going to be all from me. Thank you for watching. If you have enjoyed, please do smash the like button. If you've got any comments, leave them down below. And other than that, thank you for watching, guys. It is me, Jack, and I will talk to you guys in a bit. I'm out. And you're